A. E. Houseman, Alfred Edward Houseman, March 26, 1859, April 30, 1936, usually known as A. E. Houseman, was an English classical scholar and poet, best known to the general public for his cycle of poems A Shropshire Lad. Lyrical and almost epigrammatic in form, the poems wistfully evoke the dooms and disappointments of youth in the English countryside. Their beauty, simplicity and distinctive imagery appealed strongly to Edwardian taste, and to many early 20th-century English composers both before and after the First World War. Through their song settings, the poems became closely associated with that era, and with Shropshire itself. Houseman was one of the foremost classicists of his age and has been ranked as one of the greatest scholars who ever lived. He established his reputation publishing as a private scholar and, on the strength and quality of his work, was appointed professor of Latin at University College London and then at the University of Cambridge. His editions of Juvenal, Manilius and Lucan are still considered authoritative. The eldest of seven children, Houseman was born at Valley House in Fobury, a hamlet on the outskirts of Bromsgrove in Worcestershire to Sarah Jane, Nay Williams, married June 17, 1858 in Woodchester, Gloucester, and Edward Houseman, whose family came from Lancaster, and was baptized on April 24, 1859 at Christ Church, in Cats Hill. His mother died on his twelfth birthday, and his father, a country solicitor, remarried, to an elder cousin, Lucy, in 1873. Two of his siblings became prominent writers, Sister Clemence Houseman and brother Lawrence Houseman. Houseman was educated at King Edward's School in Birmingham and later Bromsgrove School, where he revealed his academic promise and won prizes for his poems. In 1877 he won an open scholarship to St. John's College, Oxford and went there to study classics. Although introverted by nature, Houseman formed strong friendships with two roommates, Moses John Jackson, 1858. January 14, 1923, and A. W. Pollard. Though Houseman obtained a first in classical moderations in 1879, his dedication to textual analysis, particularly of Propertius, led him to neglect the ancient historian philosophy that formed part of the Great's curriculum. Accordingly, he failed his finals and had to return humiliated in Michaelmas term to resit the exam and at least gain a lower level pass degree. Though some attribute Houseman's unexpected performance in his exams directly to his unrequited feelings for Jackson, most biographers adduce more obvious causes. Houseman was indifferent to philosophy and overconfident in his exceptional gifts, and he spent too much time with his friends. He may also have been distracted by news of his father's desperate illness. After Oxford, Jackson went to work as a clerk in the patent office in London and arranged a job there for Houseman II. The two shared a flat with Jackson's brother Adalbert until 1885, when Houseman moved to lodgings of his own, probably after Jackson responded to a declaration of love by telling Houseman that he could not reciprocate his feelings. Two years later, Jackson moved to India, placing more distance between himself and Houseman. When he returned briefly to England in 1889, to marry, Houseman was not invited to the wedding and knew nothing about it until the couple had left the country. Adalbert Jackson died in 1892 and Houseman commemorated him in a poem published as 42, A.J.J. of More Poems, 1936. Meanwhile, Houseman pursued his classical studies independently, and published scholarly articles on such authors as Horace, Propertius, Ovid, Aeschylus, Euripides, and Sophocles. He gradually acquired such a high reputation that in 1892 he was offered and accepted the professorship of Latin at University College London, UCL. When, during his tenure, an immensely rare Coverdale Bible of 1535 was discovered in the UCL library and presented to the library committee, Houseman, who had become an atheist while still an undergraduate, remarked that it would be better to sell it to buy some really useful books with the proceeds. Although Houseman's early work and his responsibilities as a professor included both Latin and Greek, he began to specialize in Latin poetry. When asked later why he had stopped writing about Greek verse, he responded, I found that I could not attain to excellence in both. In 1911, he took the Kennedy Professorship of Latin at Trinity College, Cambridge, where he remained for the rest of his life. G. P. Gold, classics professor at University College, wrote of Houseman's accomplishments. The legacy of Houseman's scholarship is a thing of permanent value, and that value consists less in obvious results, the establishment of general propositions about Latin and the removal of scribal mistakes, than in the shining example he provides of a wonderful mind at work, he was and may remain the last great textual critic.
Between 1903 and 1930 Hausmann published his critical edition of Manilius's Astronomicon in five volumes. He also edited works by Juvenal, 1905, and Lucan, 1926. Many colleagues were unnerved by his scathing attacks on those he thought guilty of shoddy scholarship. In his paper The Application of Thought to Textual Criticism, 1921, Hausmann wrote, A textual critic engaged upon his business is not at all like Newton investigating the motion of the planets, he is much more like a dog hunting for fleas. He declared many of his contemporary scholars to be stupid, lazy, vain, or all three, saying, Knowledge is good, method is good, but one thing beyond all others is necessary, and that is to have a head, not a pumpkin, on your shoulders, and brains, not pudding, in your head. His younger colleague A.S.F. Gao quoted examples of these attacks, noting that they were often savage in the extreme. Gao also related how Hausmann intimidated his students, sometimes reducing the women to tears. According to Gao, Hausmann, when teaching at University College London where, unlike Cambridge, he had students of both sexes, could never remember the names of his female students, maintaining that had he burdened his memory by the distinction between Miss Jones and Miss Robinson, he might have forgotten that between the second and fourth declension. One of Hausmann's notable pupils at Cambridge was Enoch Powell. In his private life Hausmann enjoyed gastronomy, flying in aeroplanes and making frequent visits to France, where he read books which were banned in Britain as pornographic. But he struck A.C. Benson, a fellow Don, as being descended from a long line of maidenants. His feelings about his poetry were ambivalent and he certainly treated it as secondary to his scholarship. He did not speak in public about his poems until 1933, when he gave a lecture The Name and Nature of Poetry, arguing there that poetry should appeal to emotions rather than to the intellect. Hausmann died, aged 77, in Cambridge. His ashes are buried just outside St. Lawrence's Church, Ludlow, Shropshire. During his years in London, A. E. Hausmann completed a Shropshire Lad, a cycle of 63 poems. After one publisher had turned it down, he helped subsidize its publication in 1896. At first selling slowly, it rapidly became a lasting success. Its appeal to English musicians had helped to make it widely known before World War I, when its theme struck a powerful chord with English readers. The book has been in print continuously since May 1896. The poems are marked by pessimism and preoccupation with death, without religious consolation. Hausmann wrote many of them while living in Highgate, London, before ever visiting Shropshire, which he presented in an idealized pastoral light as his land of lost content. Hausmann himself acknowledged that no doubt I have been unconsciously influenced by the Greeks and Latins, but, the, chief sources of which I am conscious are Shakespeare's songs, the Scottish border ballads, and Heine. Hausmann began writing a new set of poems after the First World War. He was an influence on many British poets who became famous by their writing about the war, and wrote several poems as occasional verse to commemorate the war dead. This included his epitaph on an army of mercenaries, honoring the British Expeditionary Force, an elite but small force of professional soldiers, a rapier amongst scythes sent to Belgium at the start of the war. Fighting a well equipped and much larger German army, they suffered heavy losses. In the early 1920s, when Moses Jackson was dying in Canada, Hausmann wanted to assemble his best unpublished poems so that Jackson could read them before his death. These later poems, mostly written before 1910, show a greater variety of subject and form than those in a Shropshire lad but lack the consistency of his previously published work. He published them as last poems, 1922, feeling that his inspiration was exhausted and that he should not publish more in his lifetime. After his death Hausmann's brother, Lawrence, published further poems and more poems, 1936, A, E, H, some poems, some letters and a personal memoir by his brother, 1937, and collected poems, 1939. A, E, H, includes humorous verse such as a parody of Longfellow's poem Excelsior. Hausmann also wrote a parodic fragment of a Greek tragedy, in English, published posthumously with humorous poems under the title Unkind to Unicorns. John Sparrow quoted a letter written late in Hausmann's life that described the genesis of his poem Sparrow himself adds, how difficult it is to achieve a satisfactory analysis may be judged by considering the last poem in a Shropshire lad. Of its four stanzas, Hausmann tells us that two are given him ready-made, one was coaxed forth from his subconsciousness an hour or two later, the remaining gun took months of conscious composition. 
no one can tell for certain which was which. In 1942 Lawrence Hausman also deposited an essay entitled A. E. Hausman's De Amicidia, there is a link to the text, below in this article, under further reading, in the British Library, with the proviso that it was not to be published for 25 years. The essay discussed A. E. Hausman's homosexuality and his love for Moses Jackson. Despite the conservative nature of the times and his own caution in public life, Hausman was quite open in his poetry, and especially in A Shropshire Lad, about his deeper sympathies. Poem 30 of that sequence, for instance, speaks of how fear contended with desire, others, I am not the first, have willed more mischief than they durst. In more poems, he buries his love for Moses Jackson in the very act of commemorating it, as his feelings of love are not reciprocated and must be carried unfulfilled to the grave. Poem Less than slash poem His poem Oh Who Is That Young Sinner With The Handcuffs On His Wrists? Written after the trial of Oscar Wilde, addressed more general attitudes towards homosexuals. In the poem the prisoner is suffering for the color of his hair, a natural quality that, in a coded reference to homosexuality, is reviled as nameless and abominable, recalling the legal phrase peccatamilud horrible, inter Christianos non nominandum, that horrible sin, not to be named amongst Christians. Hausman's poetry, especially A Shropshire Lad, was set to music by many British, and in particular English, composers in the first half of the 20th century. The national, pastoral, and traditional elements of his style resonated with similar trends in English music. In 1904, the cycle A Shropshire Lad was set by Arthur Somerville, who had begun to develop the concept of the English song cycle in his version of Tennyson's Mod a little previously. Ralph Vaughan Williams produced his well known settings of six songs. The Cycle on Wenlock Edge, for String Quartet, Tenor and Piano in 1909. Between 1909 and 1911, George Butterworth produced settings in two collections, six songs from A Shropshire Lad and Breedon Hill and other songs. He also wrote the orchestral tone poem A Shropshire Lad, first performed at Leeds Festival in 1912. Ivor Gurney was another composer who made renowned settings of Hausman's poems. Towards the end of World War I, he was working on his cycle Ludlow on Team for Boys and String Quartet, published in 1919, and went on to compose the eight-song cycle The Western Playland in 1921. One more who set Houseman songs at this period was John Ireland in the song cycle, The Land of Lost Content, 192,021. Even composers not directly associated with the pastoral tradition, such as Arnold Bax, Lennox Berkeley, and Arthur Bliss, were attracted to Hausman's poetry. A 1976 catalog listed 400 musical settings of Hausman's poems. As of 2016, LeaderNet Archive records 606 settings of 187 texts. The earliest commemoration of Hausman was in the chapel of Trinity College in Cambridge, where there is a memorial brass on the south wall. The Latin inscription was composed by his colleague there, A.S.F. Gow who is also the author of a biographical and bibliographical sketch published immediately following his death. Translated into English, the memorial reads. From 1947, University College London's academic common room was dedicated to his memory as the Houseman Room. Blue plaques followed later elsewhere, the first being on Byron Cottage in Highgate in 1969, recording the fact that a Shropshire lad was written there. More followed on his Worcestershire birthplace, his homes and school in Bromsgrove. The latter were encouraged by the Hausman Society, which was founded in the town in 1973. Another initiative was the statue in Bromsgrove High Street, showing the poet striding with walking stick in hand. The work of local sculptor Kenneth Potts, it was unveiled on March 22, 1985. The blue plaques in Worcestershire were set up on the centenary of a Shropshire lad in 1996. In September of the same year a memorial window lozenge was dedicated at Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey the following year saw the premiere of Tom Stoppard's play The Invention of Love, whose subject is the relationship between Hausman and Moses Jackson. As the 150th anniversary of his birth approached, London University inaugurated its Hausman Lectures on Classical Subjects in 2005, initially given every second year then annually after 2011. The anniversary itself in 2009 saw the launch of a new edition of A Shropshire Lad, including pictures from across Shropshire taken by local photographer Gareth Thomas. Among other events, there were performances of Vaughan Williams on Wenlock Edge and Gurney's Ludlow on Team at St. Lawrence's Church in Ludlow. These lectures are listed by date of delivery, with date of first publication given separately if different. Selected prose, edited by John Carter. 
Cambridge University Press, 1961. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.